Well, good day to everybody and welcome to this seminar organized by the Science, Technology and Innovation Unit of the Abdusalam International Center for Theoretical Physics. Very and today we will speak about ionospheric modeling and the speaker will be Dr. Alessio Pignardelli. Oh, that's so, right, Dr. Nazionale di Geophysica and Vulcanologia. These are all of us. He's talking there. Sorry. The, the only please. person you know is Fabricella. Mm. Please, move the microphones for the audience online, please. There are 22 participants. No fun. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, twenty-two. Sorry, please, for the participants online, if you could move your microphone, please. Thank you. So the speaker, we said, is uh, Dr. Alessio Pignardari from the Instituto Nazionale di Geofisica e Vulcanologia in Rome, who is visiting us here at ICTV. And he will give the presentation, modeling the top side ionosphere, improving the quick through radio occultation data. So Alessio, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you for the last presentation. Thank you for inviting me to take, to take in this seminar here at the CTP and to the CTP all for guesting me for this four weeks period. The presentation is about modeling of the top side ionosphere with particular focus on the quick top side model, which are trying to improve uh, through radio occultation measurements. This uh, presentation will uh, will summarize the results of the last three years of work and uh, some of new applications, uh, very recent results. This is yeah, the beginning of the seminar. Oh, very good. Sorry, I mute your microphone online. That's the talk. The, uh, I will briefly introduce the terrestrial ionosphere. The scenario focus on the top side ionosphere and uh, I will speak about how the quick model represents the ionosphere and then we move to the main uh, um, topics of the presentation yeah, no, is... but I don't want to be seen no. No. sorry online and only 22 you... and none of the people I know is here no, Claudio is not there no. Umberto is not there uh, no no we are the ones coming we are there. Are the green person. We are the ones. Yeah. Flores, can you mute the microphone, please? Thank you. Okay. The presentation, the main topics of the presentation is how we use top side ions for electron density observation recorded by radio occultation satellites to calculate the effective scalite, and then how the effective scalite values are used to improve the description of the quick top side parameters. Then I will show you how these parameters behave in different conditions and how it uh, can be used for improve the top side modeling by the quick. So the terrestrial ionosphere is that uh, portion of the upper atmosphere where uh, free electrons and diodes exist under the control of the gravity the magnetic field. And uh, in this region, they are present in a quantity sufficient to affect the refraction index of the atmosphere and, and so to uh, affect the propagation of electromagnetic uh, wave in the atmosphere above all radio waves. In this sketch, you can see a sketch of the ionosphere with the, its electron density profile starting from about 50 kilometer up to about 1000 kilometer, then shading in the upper, uh, in the upper plasma sphere. In the ionosphere, these uh, most of the low Earth orbit satellites and also uh, atmospheric altitudes, the GNSS satellites. The ionosphere is a plasma, specific a weakly ionized plasma, because only a small portion of the neutral density is effectively ionized by solar radiation or by corpuscular um, radiation by sun. And a uh, uh, very important point is that uh, being a plasma, it is uh, strongly coupled with the geomagnetic field. So most of the transport effects uh, in the ionosphere are um, driven by the geomagnetic field lines configuration. And uh, of course, because we have electron density 
in the ion sphere, this changes the refraction index. And this is the way Guillermo Marconi discovered the ion sphere and he used uh, the ion sphere to uh, propagate signals uh, which uh, uh, between two stations distant three about 3,000 kilometers away that was not possible uh, with ground wave, but this communication is possible through the sky wave and uh, uh, because the, of the existence of the ionosphere. So the most important parameter in the, for the description of, of the ionosphere is the electron density vertical profile. On the left, you can see modern values of the electron density in, uh, in uh, black with uh, um, in color dashed lines, uh, the, uh, the presence of different ions at different levels. Uh, at different altitudes. The ion sphere is characterized by an absolute maximum at, at the F2 layer region, which is always present, present in the ion sphere and can uh, ideally divide, it, uh, the, divide the ion sphere in two different regions. The bottom side from the ground to the F2 layer peak, which is uh, subdivided in other different regions with a relative maxima because of the presence of different ions at different altitude, altitudes are, that are produced by the um, solar input radiation, uh, specifically the extreme UV and the X-ray radiation. This is the region that was uh, first probed by ground-based uh, uh, facilities like ionosons, which are particular uh, high-frequency um, radar. And uh, uh, this is the region we know better with this kind of measurements. While in the top side, which is the region from the peak, so from HM2, which is the altitude of the peak, to the overlying plasma sphere, is characterized by a, a monotonic decrease of the electron density. And compared to the bottom side, is dominated by the diffusion of plasma along the geomagnetic field lines. Uh, while in the bottom side, the production of ions uh, is the a principal, a principal, a principal event. A compared to the bottom side, bottom side is also deep, top side is also deep, a region difficult to probe because uh, it cannot be sound by ground based ionosons, but uh, we have to use uh, more uh, expensive, expensive and sophisticated instruments like instrumentation for satellites or uh, increase cathedrals from the ground. Um, the data set we are going to use is um, they are electron density profiles recorded by radio pulsation, and we'll spend some words later in the presentation about radio pulsation. So the quick model is uh, an ionospheric electron, electron density model that was developed here at ICTP in Trieste in collaboration with the University of Graz in Austria. And uh, as the name says, it's a quick run empirical model of the ionosphere that which uh, main uh, aim is to reproduce the median behavior of the ionosphere. So to represent the main spatial, diurnal, seasonal, and solar activity variations. It allows to calculate the electron density in the entire ionospheric altitude range from the ground to GNSS altitudes, and also the total electron content by integration of the electron density. Compared to other empirical models of the ionosphere, the quick has the great advantage to calculate the electron density. And so the TEC also for slant path. Because this is an empirical model, it takes advantage of uh, the data sets uh, underlying the model. And the fact that this is a, a very great advantage for us because uh, when new data sets from uh, uh, new instruments or uh, new other missions, for example, are uh, provided, we can use this new data set to further improve the model. And this is what we are trying to do by using the radio pulsation uh, observation to improve the top side representation by the quick model. The quick was also recommended by ITUR as the recommended model for uh, a total electron content estimation. Its uh, a top side formulation was also ado adopted as one of the 
option, top side option by the International Reference Ion Sphere, which is the reference uh, uh, empirical model for the ion spheric community. And also a specific version of the quick, the quick G was uh, implemented by the European Space Agency as the single frequency ionospheric correction algorithm for the Galileo GNSS constellation. And uh, uh, finally, the week was also included by ESA in the Space Envi Environment Information System. So let's spend uh, some words on the quick uh, formulation, which is based on six semi epsilon layers. The semi epsilon layers mathematical formulation is represented here. It is a combination of exponential function. Uh, the, and these six layers are anchored to the three uh, main regions of the ionosphere. E, F1, and F2 region. We have six epsilon layers because the layer thickness parameter, E here, represented in the green, this parameter is different from the bottom to the top of each layer. The quick uh, take a simple position, uh, time and solar flux, the F10.7 daily solar flux, and give us out, us out the electron density in the entire ionospheric altitude range, and also the total electron content by numerical integration. Uh, concerning the top side formulation by the quick, uh, again, it's in, it is um, formulated as a semi epsilon layer anchored to the F2 layer peak with a layer thickness parameter, which here is called H, because it plays the role of an effective scalite. Effective scalite uh, and uh, not plasma scalite because uh, effective scalite values are those derived, uh, derived directly from electron density measurements, while plasma scalite uh, values are derived from the theory by, by the knowledge of the distribution of ions in the ionosphere and also the plasma temperature. The quick uh, model the, this effective scalite in this way where uh, it depends on three top set parameter, H0 in red, R and G parameter in uh, here represented in green and blue. So if we study the scalite behavior uh, in the top side, and specifically the scalite near the F2 layer peak by, uh, by expanding the integral series, the, the, the quick formulation of the scalite, we find that the scalite near the peak has a linear behavior where H0, which is the intercept here, represents the value assumed by the scalite at the peak, while G is the vertical gradient of the scalite. And uh, it has a lot of implication in the description of the shape of the top side electron density profile. <coughs> While if we study the scalite at infinity, at infi with infinity here, I mean very distant from the peak, uh, so, Genesis altitudes at 20,000 kilometers can be considered uh, infinity compared to the F2 layer peak altitude, which is at about 300 kilometers. So, in this limit, the scalite uh, is equal to H0 times 1 plus R. So, the R parameter is the parameter that was introduced to control the asymptotic behavior of the scalite very distant from the peak. In the, uh, in the quick model, gender, uh, gender parameters are constant, G equal to 0.125 and R equal to 100. While H0 in the quick uh, is derived from bottom side ionosphere parameters with a correction factor which uh, was calculated based on top side, top side Saunders data. So the bend point here is that the H0 in the quick is um, from bottom side parameters, while we know that uh, there are some, uh, some cases where the bottom side, the top side scalite behave in very different way. So the, our goal is to op op uh, improve the uh, description of these three top side parameter by, uh, by, by using the radio pulsation dissertation. Radio occultation is a remote sensing uh, measurement technique which makes use of uh, radio waves, uh, electromagnetic signals sent by GNSS satellites. In this sketch on the left, you see GPS satellite at about 20,000 kilometers of altitude. 
that are recorded by lower orbit satellites, in this case, cosmic, uh, in a radio occult in a, in a occultation geometry. Specifically, since the ionosphere is a refractive medium, the radio waves uh, from GNSS with the satellites uh, um, uh, propagates across the ionosphere and then experience a phase delay, which is dependent on the total electron content in the path. In the radio occultation geometry, uh, it is possible to uh, from the total electron content between the GPS and the LEO satellites to uh, calculate in a spherical approximation to calculate the electron density in the tangent point of, of the radio occultation. And because the satellites move, different altitudes can be scanned by uh, can be scanned to obtain the, a quasi vertical electron density profile. Quasi vertical because, of course, satellites move, so the tangent points are, are not. Uh, uh, in, the same, uh, in the same location, but uh, in the most of the cases, these profiles can be considered as quasi vertical. Our data set is composed by cosmic formosa 3 radio occultation electron density profiles from the beginning of the, of the mission 2006 to the 2018. Um, specifically, the satellites uh, as a uh, have a 72 degree of inclination, so can cover most of the latitudes, only the very high latitudes are not covered, covered by this uh, data set, and at, at about 800 kilometers of altitude. So how we calculate the effective scale height? To do so, we developed uh, a straightforward mathematical uh, methodology, which starting from the Nepix and the Epstein configuration allow to mathematically we calculate the effective scale height. This can be done mathematically by, uh, by some mathematical steps with a change of variables defining T as a function of the scale height and alpha as the ratio between the electron density in the top side and the electron density at the peak. If we change, if we make this change of variables, the, the quick semi extend layer become a second degree equation with variable T which is dependent on the scale height. This uh, equation has two analytical solutions. T1 and T2 that can be obtained by electron density measurements in the top side. Um, and then from the T uh, parameter, we can obtain uh, H by, uh, by making the inverse of this change of variables. Well, both uh, uh, two solutions are mathematically acceptable because when we put them in the scale height, they produce the same electron density profile. But T1 uh, uh, produce um, positive values of the scale height in the top side, while T2 uh, gives uh, negative values of the uh, scale height in the top side. So we consider the physical, uh, the physically right solution, the one with T1. So if we put T1 in this uh, formulation of the scale height, we obtain what we call the Epstein scale height, which is the effect effective scale height with, that is mathematically uh, deduced by the semi-Epstein. As you can see, to calculate the Epstein scale height, we only need information on the F2 layer peak, its altitude HL2, and uh, the the absolute uh, maximum absolute values of the electron density at the peak and then F2. And uh, we need to know the top side electron density profile. With this information, we can obtain information on the effective scale height in all the top side profile. And uh, fortunately, radio occultation by cosmic give us this information. So we do observe electron density values in the top side, we can calculate the Epstein scale height, and then we, we make a nonlinear fit of the Nequik top side scale height over this uh, calculated effective values. I will show you in the next slide uh, an example based on a specific uh, radio computation profile. Well, the results the, of this nonlinear fit gives us output three optimized values of the three top side parameters. In fact, in the fit, it's zero, R and G, 
uh, are um, three parameters that we optimize to reduce to minimize the residuals between modeled and measured and top side uh, scalar values. Well, from each fit, fit, fit we obtain the optimized values of the three top side parameter that can be used to calculate new values of the, the quick top side scalite and then new values of the electron density in the top side. <coughs> So let's have a look at, the exam, at an example. On the left, on the proto, on the left, you have top side electron density values, while on the right, top side scalite values. Our starting point is the uh, electron density measured by cosmic, which is represented by the blue points in the left plot. From these uh, electron density values, we calculate the effective scalite with this formulation I just showed in the next in the previous slide to obtain the vertical profile of the effective scalite, which is represented by the blue points in the right plot. For these blue points, we fit the quick top size scalite represented here by leaving three H0 R and G parameters. And so the results of the fit give us the optimized values of the three top side parameters, which is in this case, this is what each zero optimized value is equal to 34.11 kilometer, R is equal to 8.68, and G equals to 0.236. So you can see that these values are different from the ones uh, in commonly used by the liquid model. So the results of the fit is the red line on the right plot, which gives the vertical variation of this scalite. And then by putting the scalite in the uh, top side formulation of the NEQUIC, we obtain updated values of the electron density by NEQUIC, which, is, which are represented by the red line on the left plot. And uh, as you can see, the exactly match the values measured by cosmic. So we apply this methodology to the entire cosmic data set, specifically about 1.8 million of profiles recorded from 2006 to 2018. And first of all, we, we made a, a validation to test the ability of our methodology in reproducing the cosmic top side data set. So from, uh, uh, from the, all the measured and uh, moderate profiles, we calculated some statistical metrics. In the middle of, of the slide, we have the um, percentage residuals, electron density percentage residuals between values of <laughs> moderate by the quick with the optimized top side parameters and the electron density values reported by cosmic. Here, all the profiles are normalized uh, uh, to the peak. So here, zero kilometer is the altitude from the peak, uh, from the peak in the top side. Well, it is quite uh, visible that uh, residuals lie uh, for all the altitudes in a range between plus and minus 5%. And also, if we consider the top side the total electron content by integrating the electron density profile from the peak to the cosmic altitude, and by calculating calculating the residuals between mesh and moderate values, we can see that the residuals are very uh, peaked around zero with very small dispersion. So this test tell us that our methodology is able, with our methodology, we can reproduce the uh, cosmic uh, top side uh, uh, profiles by using the quick with optimized top side parameters. And now see how this parameter behave in different conditions. Uh, these are the results for H0. So we have a large data set of uh, uh, values, uh, 1.8 million of values. So we can study uh, the behavior of the parameter as a function of spatial time, lunar, seasonal, and also solar and magnetic activity uh, variations. The ones represented here on the left are the median values of, of H0 as a function of geographical coordinates, while on the right, uh, median uh, H0 values as a function of the quasi dipole magnetic latitude on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis for the entire 
dataset. Uh, for most, more, for most of the these plots, we use uh, a magnetic latitude because uh, looking at the plots in the geographical coordinates, we can see that uh, H0 show variation which are strongly connected, connected with the geomagnetic field lines configuration, configuration. In fact, it maximizes around the geomagnetic equator and also uh, in the aurora local regions. And it also exhibit time variation, uh, seasonal, and also solar activity variation with maximum values during years or of uh, high solar activity. These are the corresponding results for the G parameter. I remind you that G in the original equation is a constant equal to 0.125, while from uh, uh, our results, we see that G is not constant, it's not constant uh, spatially and uh, even uh, in time. And it also uh, uh, lies in a range between 0.1 and 0.3. So the values, the value of semi binary is quite reliable just uh, at uh, very low latitudes, while at middle and high latitudes, uh, it uh, represents an underestimation of the uh, G value that uh, we can obtain from radio potential measurements. And also these results tell us that we need to relax the constancy of the G parameters and also we need to model it as a function at least of spatial time parameters. These are the results for the R parameter. Again, R parameter is constant to 100 in a week, while from our results we see that R show spatial time variations in a range between zero and 20. So much lower than those uh, uh, used by the original week. And uh, I want to draw you your attention to this quite strange behavior of the R parameter at very low latitudes, where we can see a sudden drop of the R parameter at, uh, for a range of latitudes uh, between uh, plus minus 30 degree uh, geomagnetic latitude. This is a uh, um, we wondered if uh, this is a physical, uh, a physical uh, feature of the ionosphere of, of this R parameter, or it is uh, in some way connected to the methodology or the data set we use to retrieve the R parameter. To, to investigate this, we look at uh, a specific top side profiles recorded at low latitudes, and we came out with the conclusion that. Uh, this behavior is, uh, uh, is due to two many reasons. This one is uh, when we have, uh, when we have, we have uh, uh, top side profiles with a limited altimeter extension. Like in this case, where we have HN2 at about 330 kilometer and the upper point in the top side is uh, at uh, about 200 kilometer above the peak. If you remind that uh, R parameter describes the asymptotic behavior of the scalite, so very distant from the peak, it is understandable that with uh, a very limited extension of the top side, top side profile, we cannot reliably uh, constrain this parameter. And in fact, in this case, R is equal to about one. Another, uh, another, uh, another cause of these uh, not very low lab values so far is uh, represented here in the second plot where we have enough top side profile. In this case, the upper point is at about 800 kilometer. But uh, uh, in this case, we have a top side scale height represented here on, on bottom, which is perfectly linear in the top side. In this case, we can reliably um, calculate the H0 and G parameter, but we obtain uh, not uh, meaningful uh, R parameter values, which is, in this case, very high. And why this happens? Well, if we consider the mathematical formulation, the inequality of size scale height, and make the limit for R parameter, which tend to infinity, we can easily demonstrate that in this limit, the scale height is again linear. So this means that 
when we have top side profiles whose scalite is exactly linear, we cannot estimate the R parameter, which describes the nonlinear behavior of the scalite very distant from the peak. So from very linear profiles, we cannot estimate the nonlinear part of the scalite, which is, uh, which is given by the R parameter. So we are working on this issue uh, by also in using different measurements other than the redipultation to constrain the R parameter behavior at very low latitudes. So let's have a look at the diurnal seasonal variation of the three top side parameters. The diurnal on top plots is a function of local time, while on bottom plot, the seasonal variation as a function of the day of the year for the three parameters. Well, about H0, you probably recognize more, uh, most of the features that were also found by, uh, by other authors by using the different uh, top side formulation or different uh, Assets, while the results for G and R are quite original. Again, for the R parameter, you can see that for most of the local time, we cannot estimate the R parameter at very low latitudes, but for specific local times uh, at uh, around the sunrise, you can see that we can also estimate the R parameter also at very low latitudes. This is because at these local times, at very low latitudes, the ions is very compressed. So HMF2 is very low. So considering that the, the cosmic satellite is a fixed altitude, when we have HM, HMF2 very low, it means that we have, uh, uh, we have more data in the top side. So in such cases, we have enough top side profile to estimate also the R parameter. But this is not possible for other local times where the HM2 is higher than at around sunrise. These are the, these are the results about solar magnetic activity variations. H0 is positively correlated with the solar activity as a function of the 81 day running mean of the F10.7, while G uh, doesn't show a very high very high so activity variation, only at very high latitudes. And again, our parameters show this uh, strange behavior we are trying to solve. About magnetic activity, we have to say that for a very disturbed condition, our that's uh, is very limited. And, and so this, uh, this is a work in progress, but uh, we are mainly interested to the spatial, the urinal system of activity variation because they are uh, the variations that are described by the weak model, why the magnetic activity currently is not uh, included in the weak model. So, to conclude, I will show you a first application of uh, uh, our calculated optimized top side parameters by replicating um, um, a test made by Billitzer in 2009. Uh, specific abilities in this paper use the three IRI uh, top side uh, options. One of them is the quick one to study the uh, electron density <coughs> behavior in the top side along uh, 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 um, for different uh, geomagnetic latitudes at 16 local time for the north for the northern summer season and medium solar activity levels. Uh, he was mainly interested in the electron density variation in the top side at very low latitudes because measurements the last that at the edge at the F2 layer uh, peak altitude, we have the double crest of the equatorial ionization anomaly, while in the top side, the two crests should merge in a single crest <coughs> above the geomagnetic equator. And uh, the quick. It is, uh, does not reproduce this behavior because in the region of week, the scalite is calculated, H0 is calculated from bottom side parameter. So, so it, it uh, tends to keep the double crest also at uh, higher altitudes in the top side. So let's have a look if uh, uh, with our optimized value, we can uh, reproduce the desired behavior in the top side. So we use our 
grids of uh, uh, calculated effect, uh, um, top side parameters, F0 and G and R. We consider the local time at 16, like this by Pilza. And then we obtain this uh, latitudinal profiles, geomagnetic latitude uh, coordinates for the three parameters, where you can see how the, the heat issue we have in the R parameter, which is a then drop at values around zero at very low latitudes. So if we use these three topside parameters in the quick topside formulation, we obtain this top, uh, latitudinal section of the topside profiles. Of course, when we have these very low R values at low latitudes, it means that uh, for these cases, we have a very low, um, very low topside scale height. And this means that uh, the electron density in these cases uh, uh, fall uh, too rapidly. And then we have this fall in the ionosphere at low latitudes. And this is why we have to solve this problem of the R parameter because it gives uh, not physical uh, features. But if we focus on the shape of these lines of very low latitudes, we can see that we have a, a single maximum, which is, uh, which is the behavior we want to reproduce. So we made some funny tests. This one, we consider only H0 and G from, the co from cosmic, so optimize values from cosmic and put R equal to 100, which is the, values, uh, the value used by Nequik, a posteriori. When we put another value a posteriori, uh, the result is, uh, is a mess because in the Nequik top side formulation, R and G para parameter are, are inherently equal to each other. So we cannot uh, uh, fix one bar uh, G, uh, R parameter while G is calculated from other measurements. This uh, doesn't work. What happens if we put R equal to zero? This means that the scale height in all the top side is equal to the scale height at the peak. Of course, this is a, a too low values of the scale height, which, which reproduce a too fast decrease of the electron density in the top side. But with only the zero parameter, we can reproduce a, a beautiful single peak above the geomagnetic equator. So this tells us that H0 parameters can effectively describe the latitudinal behavior of the scale height. This is why from cosmic, we consider only H0 optimized values and put G, both G and R equal to the ones used by the peak. In this case, we see that we are almost able to reproduce the single peak, the merging of the two crests in a single crest above the geomagnetic equator with just a slight uh, uh, Last test, again, is zero from cosmic and G equal to 0 0.188, which is the average values uh, by considering optimized values of six, at 16 local time. So the, the, all the values of different latitudes for such local times are averaged and uh, we obtain this value. While uh, R equal to 15 is a value that we can, uh, uh, in a first approximation, deduce uh, from the knowledge of the plasma scale height by considering uh, in a very close approximation that the plasma scale height doesn't change, G doesn't change. In this case, the, the variation, the scale height, uh, plasma scale height is only due to the change of uh, mass from the uh, peak to the infinity, where at the peak we have uh, only, almost only O plus ions with a mass uh, equal to 16. At infinity, we have only H plus ions with mass equal to one. So the scale height from the peak to the infinity should scale by a factor of 16. To accommodate this uh, behavior, R F has to be equal to 15. So if we use this uh, value for R, we obtain, we obtain uh, such good results with uh, single quest of G, the geomagnetic equator and vertical gradients of the scale height, which are very similar to those expected by machines. So we validated our approach by using in situ electron density observation by 
several uh, new satellites from CHAMP, uh, which is uh, near to the major peak at about 385 kilometers, then going up Swarm A, Swarm B, Icon, and DMSP F15, which is the highest one at about 850 kilometers. Measurements are in gray with dispersion, and while the uh, color the curves are the water valleys. Uh, mainly, I want to draw your attention mainly on the quick results for DMSP altitudes, the bottom right plot. In fact, you can see that the quick, original the quick in blue, the, again at this altitude describe the double quest of the quadrant ionization anomaly, while data show a single quest about the geomagnetic equator. And using optimized values of the top five parameters, we obtain the blue, the um, black curve here, which uh, is able uh, to better describe both the latitudinal behavior of the electron density and also with values which are electron density values which are uh, more in agreement with the ones measured by the satellite. So this is just a fifth uh, validation of the, our approach. But of course, uh, these results are only based on the use of optimized AH0 values from cosmic, while uh, because here we put G and R constant but different from the original ones it is by the week. While uh, our final goal is to uh, uh, obtain a model for all the three top side parameters. So in conclusion, we developed a novel methodology to calculate the effective scalar in the top side ionosphere by using electron density measurements by radioputation of cosmic uh, satellites. And with this uh, methodology, we obtained optimized values of the three liquid top side parameters. And uh, we also show that this uh, parameter has uh, special temporal variations. The main result is that uh, G and R parameter, which uh, are kept co constant uh, by original quick, actually are not constant. And then we need to uh, model this parameter as a function of uh, different time spatial variables. And also H0 among the three parameters is the most important one for the description of the top side, specifically for the description of the latitude variation of the electron density in the top side. So uh, we are working on the improvement of the description of the R parameter at low latitudes because at the current stage, uh, we cannot use the calculated R values at low latitudes. And to do so, we are, uh, uh, we are uh, using also other uh, electron density measurements uh, other, other than the reputation to constrain the R behavior at very low latitudes. So uh, after solving this problem, uh, we will be ready to global model the three top side parameters and then include them in the, the quick top side formulation and finally validate the, validating the new top side model against uh, different data sources. So this concludes my presentation and uh, personal are welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Interesting presentation, dense presentation. And of course, if there are questions, Alessio will be so kind to answer. We start from the audience here. If not, we can go in the chat. Maybe Alessio, you can read the question from here. If not, no, yeah. and, uh, there, is right uh, ah, there is a right hand. Oh. So please, Anton, ah. Anton, if you can unmute yourself and ask the question, we should be able to hear you. Oh, 
没有了。Hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Now yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Alessio. Very interesting presentation. So I have a couple of questions uh, for you. If you can go back to your slide number 14. Uh, no, 13. Yeah, I apologize. One. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this one. So I have a question regarding your uh, right plot. A bottom plot. I see some sort of fluctuations uh, in, a, in in the value of H0 along the magnetic uh, equator uh, from year 2006 to 2018. You see like quasi periodic fluctuations up and down. So do you have any idea why it may happen? Is it, could it be because a quasi dipole magnetic field is not actually uh, representing the reality or maybe some other uh, physical you know, processes behind that fluctuation. Okay. I think that they are probably due to the fact that, uh, uh, of course, the maximum is above the geomagnetic equator, but the equatorial uh, ionization normal crest also show a uh, latitudinal uh, dependence for as a function of the season. So this is. Um, so there is also a control, a geographic uh, latitude control in the quadrant ionization anomaly that, uh, of course, cannot be described by using the magnetic latitude uh, coordinates. Yeah, yeah but so, it seems it seems to be that you have also a solar activity level dependence in that location, right? Like towards the solar maximum, 2014, uh, 12, 14, you have a displacement of the maximum uh, towards northern latitudes, right? Towards North Pole. Okay, you mean that this fluctuation is uh, symmetric around the geomagnetic equator for low and mid uh, no, no. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if you if you look at the at the at the zero line. You have a displacement of the of the peak around years of high solar activity level, 2012, 14, and it looks like it is displaced towards like five, ten, ten ish of uh, um, in latitude, or maybe I, I'm just uh, <laughs> uh, very good point. <laughs> this is yeah. something to, to investigate in the future. I don't have uh, actually. I don't have. Uh, 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 well for this uh, behavior. Yeah, because w one of the things we used to when, when I used to work with Neckwick is uh, is uh, this quasi dipole latitude or magnetic field description or more deep. It actually doesn't include the the changes in the magnetic field um, with time, right? So my <laughs> first idea was, uh, could it be because of that reason or maybe something else? But yeah, uh, thanks. It's it's uh, really interesting to me. And, and uh, I have a, one more technical question. So talking about H0 again, if you, uh, you said you, you are able to find an optimal or let's say a H0 that is better representing the reality. Uh, my question is um, how you made sure that your transition from bottom side to top side, because bottom side, you have a, an H0 that is uh, produced by other means. And a top side H0, you say you found it in, from your experimental data. My question is, how would you ensure the transition from bottom side, smooth transition from bottom side to top side? Okay, very good, very good point. Because uh, as you perfectly know, in uh, the quick, uh, the two <coughs> scalite uh, values, the bottom side and the top side, are uh, related by a K parameter. So to use these H0 values, uh, to put them in the Nequick model, if we, if we would believe that uh, H0 values from the top side are the right one, so uh, the, uh, we, we will have to to, to recalculate the bottom side scalite 
starting from the top and not calculate the top size scalite starting from the bottom side as is done by, uh, it is done by uh, Karen McQuick. So inclusion of this, mo of this uh, model in the, in the McQuick is not simple because uh, uh, if we want to keep the philosophy of the, of the quick of uh, connecting the bottom side to the top side scalite, uh, we have to also recalculate the bottom side scalite starting from the top. <coughs> okay, that, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I understand that. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. That's why I was curious <laughs> how you... Next step. Next step. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you, Alessio. That's all from my side. Thank you, Anto. Question in the chat. Okay, there is a question in the chat by Sasha Kustov. How often do you have situation with huge R bars? Well, looking uh, looking at the at these plots, uh, you see that at very low latitudes, uh, the huge values, uh, huge R values are very common. Uh, and in fact, uh, to obtain these plots uh, at the first step, uh, I excluded all the R values uh, higher than 1000 because uh, uh, using uh, such a high value, it means that the scalite uh, distance from the peak is too high, and then the total electron content values uh, would be too high. So these plots uh, are. Uh, uh, are obtained with, uh, by excluding uh, uh, very high R values. And if we exclude very high values, we, uh, we have only the cases where the R parameter is very low, which is this first case here. As I said before, because for most of the local time hours at low latitudes, we don't have enough top side profile to constrain the R parameter behavior. But of course, we have also other many cases. Uh, I don't know the percentage of these cases, but there are very high, a very high percentage of cases where the scalite is very, very linear. And, um, and of course, we cannot solve this problem by using only radio quotation measurements because uh, uh, also, uh, if you will, will use other radio quotation satellites, the cosmic one is the highest one in altitude. So it uh, doesn't exist as a satellite uh, at the higher altitudes. So we, we, need to, we need to use a different kind of measurements to calculate the alpha. trying to include the information given by uh, total electron content because uh, uh, we know that from the radio quotation we can reliably uh, calculate the H0 and G parameter. So the point is that we can modify the R parameter to match the total electron content from uh, which come from different measurements. So we are trying to apply this uh, by using uh, precise orbit determination uh, to electron content values, but by the same cosmic satellite. And, and so we are trying to match the total electron content <coughs> given by the POD uh, to obtain an, an optimized value of the R parameter. So the H0 and G has kept uh, equal to the ones given by the radio quotation. And then we start from the R value given by radio quotation, change it to match the total electron content by PMD. 
at the same location at the same time. In this case, we can uh, we, we we are investigating that uh, if we can uh, if we can calculate uh, with the previous that parameter also for these cases where we cannot uh, calculate it so only from the reputation profiles. It's a working process. I think the, the question the question I'm, by Jacob okay. was not ah, you are writing okay. Because there is something that is in line with this question, I think, by Fabricio, if I understand correctly. Alessio, you put it in the microphone. The question from Fabricio Did you try to use the old measurements derived by top size sounder? Yes, this is uh, one of the first uh, tests uh, uh, I've done. I use uh, Alouette and ISIS uh, top size sounders. Uh, by using the same methodology developed here for radio occultation, but uh, unfortunately also the uh, top size sounders, uh, to, uh, val top size values uh, are not uh, higher enough, in, high enough in altitude to constrain the high behavior at low latitudes. Uh, and also we, we don't have enough top size sounder profile to correctly describe the high behavior for different uh, latitudes, different local times and so on. So the question is that, yes, we try, but uh, they are not enough to solve uh, our problem, our problem. Okay. Let's see if there are other questions. There is another, another question. So I'm not in the field. Yeah, sorry, Enrique, please, could you come here? If not, maybe you cannot be here by I'm the, the colleagues. Field, but what I know is this is very empirical, but we have no idea efforts to to make a theoretical framework. And what do you, this H4 equals thermal force divided by gravity force come from? Okay. Uh, to answer this question, I have some backup slides. So. Where, uh, I want to show you the link between the theoretical Scalite, which is uh, used by from plasma bipolar diffusion theory, and the effective scalite, which is uh, an empirical parameter deduced from electromagnetic measurements. Well, in, in a paper in 2020, we demonstrated that uh, they are related to each other. In fact, starting from the equation for, uh, for motion for the ions and the electrons in the plasma bipolar diffusion theory uh, limit. Uh, we can calculate the, what is called the vertical scalite, which gives the rate of change of the electron density in this uh, plasma diffusion state. Well, the vertical scalite has this, uh, from theory, has this uh, mathematical formulation, where Kb, Tp is the plasma temperature, Kb is the plasma constant, M is the reduced mass of the ions, G is the Gravity. If we consider only the um, only the balance between the pressure gradient and the gravity field, we obtain what is called the plasma scalar, which is Kb dp over mg. But including also the effect of vertical gradient of plasma scalar and the uh, collision with neutrals, we obtain this uh, vertical scalar. So this is the scalar. Uh, from theory. Well, uh, starting from the liquid top side formulation, we can obtain the same quantity, vertical scalar for uh, empiric uh, liquid, which has this formulation as a function of the effective scalar. Well, the question here is that these two vertical scalar are linked to each other. So, mathematically, yes. In fact, if you calculate the limit for the altitude to the infinity, the ratio of these uh, uh, quantities is equal to one. So the effective scalite should tend to the theoretical vertical scalite at infinity. And the same, the vertical gradients. But uh, of course, they, they would be the same at infinity, but we are interested if they are the same near the peak in the top side of your sphere. Well, by applying uh, this to a top-site uh, radio quotation profile, 
a specific uh, results coming from a cosmic profile. On the left, we have the top side scalite. On the right, the vertical gradient of the scalite. Blue points are the ones uh, uh, coming from the measurements. Red is a linear fit from the measurements. And the green line is the vertical scalite from the theory. Well, we can see that the green line approach to the effective values uh, uh, at, higher, at higher altitudes and also the, the scalite gradient. This tells us that, uh, okay, they are equal to the infinity, but they are also very similar, just some hundreds of kilometers above the F2 layer peak. Uh, so uh, as a first result, uh, so this tells us that the effective scalite values should tell uh, us some, 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 <coughs> some, something about the theoretical values that can be deduced from uh, the plasma bipolar diffusion team. Just an, an example here, on the left, we have the scalite gradient calculated from cosmic, which is uh, equal to the G parameter in the quick vertical scalite gradient. On the right, the electron temperature from uh, swarm these satellites at about 500 kilometers of altitude. Top, top plot are the diurnal variability for different uh, magnetic latitudes. But to plot the seasonal variability. Well, we see that on the left we have a purely empirical parameter, which is deduced from electron density measurements, while on the right we have uh, electron temperature, which is a proxy of the plasma temperature. And the, we know that the scalite is uh, strongly driven by the plasma temperature behavior in the top side. Well, these two quantities, empirical and theoretical, behave in, in, in a very similar way for the owner seasonal variation. Of course, this is only a preliminary result, but it tells us that uh, the empirical uh, parameters has a, a very strong connection with the uh, theoretical, uh, with the uh, physical parameters that can be used uh, in the theory. And so we are trying to find link between empirical and theoretical parameters. Thank you for the question. If there are other questions, not the the chat. Chat. No. Okay. If there are no other questions, we can conclude this seminar. We thank again Alessio. To the participant, the audience online and here in prisons. And thank you very much. Have a nice rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Very much.